Jack. Yes. Ex explainer time. Always good. I got a topic that we should have done years ago. I don't okay. know why it took us this long to figure out that right. we should do it. Yeah. I want to describe what it's like to die as you fall into a black hole. Now, are we recounting a personal experience here? <laughs> so perhaps that could be the reason for the delay in discussing this. <laughs> are you sure you're ready for this after this after this harrowing experience? One of the highest had. compliments I ever got was um, I was giving a tour of the newly built Hayden Planetarium, newly renovated, right. to Seinfeld, okay, who who lived across the street, so he's a neighbor. What's the deal with the lights? <laughs> wait, wait, so I've just, I described the Big Bang to him in the first few moments and right. in, in exquisite detail, and he says, it sounds like you were there. <laughs> <laughs> I thought, man, that's a high compliment. I, I, yeah. I, I, I'd never forget that. That's pretty so funny. I'm about to describe death by black hole, and no, I will alert you in advance, I was not there. Okay. But we know the physics of it. And that, that, that's just as good. Okay. All right. So, a black hole. So, you're standing here on Earth. All right. All right. I am, by the way, sitting. You are, you're sitting on Earth. And your feet are closer to the center of the Earth than the top of your head is. Okay. Do we agree? I, I will agree. I'm not that short. So, yeah. <laughs> you have to be really short for that yeah, not to be short. true. Got to be kind of like a Mr. Potato Head. <laughs> <laughs> so, Just have your feet right at the bottom right of, of your neck, head, <laughs> right up under your, right up under your neck. <laughs> I guess Mr. Potato Head didn't have a torso. No. Oh my gosh. That's right. Oh, that is that is sad. Yeah, it is. Now, I, well, how come I never noticed that? That's right. Mr. Potato Head was all head. It was all head and feet. Arms and feet. That was it. <laughs> arms coming out of the side of his head. That's right. Arms. Right. <clears throat> all right. So you can calculate the strength of Earth's gravity at your feet and the strength of Earth's gravity at the top of your head, and you'll get a different number. Wow. Because your feet are closer to the center of the Earth. Okay. And the closer you are to an object with gravity, the higher is the gravitational force operating on you. Okay. So if I do that for you, uh, you're 5'9", something like that. What, how tall are you? Five, and ten. so... You're five ten. I want that so, extra inch. You're a big guy, so you don't care. <laughs> oh, yeah, you're like six three, so you don't give a damn. No, right? I'm six two. I'm See, six two. that's what I'm saying. You know, I gave I, I you six, an inch. <laughs> I, I was six two in high school. I probably, you know, got the old man shrinkage from that. So, all right. So I can write down the difference between those two forces, and it's not going to be very much. So you're not. You don't think about it. You don't care about it. It's not much because your height is small compared with the radius of the Earth. Correct. Radius of the is 4,000 miles, and here you are, you know, just under six feet. So that's, so we don't think about this difference in the gravitational force. We don't have occasion to think about it. But that difference in force has a word. It's called the tidal force. Okay. Okay, now the tidal force of the moon operating on the earth, the side of the earth facing the moon feels a stronger gravitational force of the moon than the side of the earth that's on the, than the other side of the earth that's farther away from the moon. You can calculate this, okay? And so the entire earth is stretched in the direction of the moon. Because of this tidal force. Okay. The solid earth is stretched, but that's less notable, noticeable because we're walking around on the solid earth. But what's most noticeable is the oceans are stretched. And it's, it's called a tidal bulge. All right? And so wherever you're going to find the moon, you're going to find a tidal bulge elongated pointing to the moon. It actually doesn't point. It points ahead of the moon because we're dragging it. In our as Earth rotates, but that's a whole other explainer that okay. we'll get into. For now, just consider it we're aligned with the moon. Okay, so now watch. That's because Earth is big compared to the distance between the moon and the Earth. Okay, so that's why it's Earth is bigger compared to that distance than you are compared to Earth's radius. Right. So now watch what happens. Let's go, let's turn Earth into a black hole. 
Let's right. just do that. Okay. You know how you do that? You just shrink it. Okay. Yes. As you shrink it, the gravity on the surface goes up. Why? You're getting closer to the center of the Earth, and it still has all the mass in this model that I'm describing. Okay? Two things tell you how much you weigh, how far away you are, mm -hmm. and how and much mass is tugging on you. Right. As that happens, your size, which is still 5 feet 10, right. relative to the size that the Earth is becoming, is actually more and more significant. Right. Because okay. the Earth is no longer 4,000 miles in radius. It's Correct. That radius is shrinking and shrinking and shrinking, so it's becoming much closer to my size as it's Correct. Shrinks. Correct. And when you do the math, the difference in the force between your feet and the top of the head gets greater and greater and greater. Ooh. Okay. So now, let's fall into a black hole and describe what happens. Okay? Okay. So here you are, falling into a black, towards a black hole. Uh, it, it, it's, there's no air, so no one's hearing you. Damn okay. it. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> you, you're just catching flies with your open mouth there. That's all. All right. <laughs> So or meteor particles. So you're you're falling feet first. Let's give your feet first dive, and you, the tidal force is slowly getting greater and greater. And initially, it feels kind of good. Who doesn't love a good stretch? Ugh. Right. Best spa but, ever. I know. And then you realize, wait a minute, that stretch is not only not abating; it's getting worse. Uh oh, we're getting medieval. Yeah, exactly. You get medieval. This ain't cool. <laughs> Don't make me get medieval on your ass. <laughs> I had not thought about how medieval this is. Because you look at the machines they had. Oh. It's like, what were they thinking? Let me tell you something. Somebody was staying up at night. Thinking this stuff think up. Trying ways to torture and kill people. Because <laughs> That is effed up. Yeah, man. they excelled beyond... You know, imagination. And I heard there's another one where they disembowel you, and so that hurts enough. And then they take your intestines out and put it on the fire so that you're not only in pain from being cut open, your organs are in pain after they've removed it because it's still, you know, your, your intestines are all stringy, right? right? Yeah. So they're still connected to you. And so, and then you know what draw, being drawn and quartered is. You know what that is. Um... Is that the one where they put you on the horse, or the four horses? Yeah, four horses, right. So, so a horse to each limb, and, and then they they'll, they give they, they'll score you, right? They'll just just so that you you cut more easily. Oh man, <laughs> we must perforate him now. <laughs> Wait for the perforation. <laughs> so you do that. And when the four horses run away, you are in four different pieces. That right? is there disgusting. Is. <laughs> no matter what, you are in four different pieces wow. by the time that's done. Uh, well, okay. really, five, because there's a torso laying on the ground. No, 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 no. No, that's not how it works. No, I thought you... I thought you... So no. You could, each limb... No. Okay, so if, I, if, so if three limbs are pulled off, the fourth limb is still attached to the rest of your body. No, I thought it was four. Like four horses, one for each limb... And I know. What I'm saying is, your body doesn't rip apart simultaneously. Okay. Oh God. Okay. So oh. one horse rips off one arm, oh, no. and then one other leg, no. and then another leg, and one arm has slightly more muscle tissue there, oh, holds on to the rest of the torso. I did not know this is how this thing worked. This is. I mean, you just made it ten times worse. I'm saying that what you described, the limbs would have to be equally attached with a forced force tissue exactly okay that, that equally would allow them. and simultaneously pulled in exactly the right angles exactly. for them to pull off all at the same instant and well, this see, is not how that works i that's my point you ruined my fantasy is what i'm okay, trying to tell sorry. you <laughs> that you just drop down in the middle as yeah, your four it's like limbs i just drop in the middle and i'm sitting there like an oblong you know then you're not being quartered you're being dismembered that's different you're right okay, okay. 
So this is all a nice preamble for what's about to happen to you. Uh-oh. <laughs> okay? So your feet first falling towards the black hole. Okay. The stretch feels good, but then it becomes unrelenting. Because your height is now a bigger and bigger fraction of the distance you are to the center of the black hole. All right? So now you start sliding in, and what happens? Oh, my gosh. The tidal force exceed. There will be a point where the tidal force exceeds the molecular forces that keep your body attached as one piece. Oh, no, my molecular bond. Your molecular bond. So you will snap into two parts. That's nasty. And I, and since all the forces are operating uniformly across your body, uh-huh. it's not like a horse yanking on one thing or another. I, I did a calculation. I have to. I probably have to speak with some physiologist about this. But I think you'll initially snap at your lower spine. Okay, so those are the two bits. Now these those two parts of you continue to feel the tidal force. Okay, so they stretch. Okay, and so. Your bottom half snaps into two pieces. Oh, right. Your upper torso snaps into two pieces. And as best as I can judge, that would be at the base of your neck. Okay? Oh. Now, your brain is still working. You can, in principle, see this. Okay? This happens pretty fast. And, by the way, they did these experiments, uh, from what I've read, in, um, in the French Revolution with the guillotine. Right. If you're going to be guillotine, you might as well help out science. Right. Yeah. So yeah. W- with your head on the ground, before your brain really knows that it can't get oxygen from blood, do your eyes still work? OK. And so I think they did experiments where they hold up one finger, two finger, and you blink if you saw two fingers or one finger just for that. Because your eyes go straight to your brain. They don't need your, your torso <laughs> for, for none of that. OK. <laughs> so... <laughs> People were messed up Your in the past. Are okay. Awful. It's not like it's <laughs> All right. So now you're in four pieces, and they continue to feel the tidal force. And then you go from two to four to eight to 16 to 32 to 64. And this continues until you are a stream of atoms, like a train of atoms pouring down to the singularity. And that's not the worst of it. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the fabric of space and time funnels, funnels, and gets narrower and narrower because it ends up at a singularity. Oh no! So no. whatever horizontal volume you occupied, you become extruded through the fabric of space like toothpaste through a tube. This form of death has a name, and it's called spaghettification. Okay. Well, I mean, I can't believe something that horrific could have such a delicious name. (laughs) How how did this happen? (laughs) So, I, many years ago, wrote a book called Death by Black Hole. And I thought the book would do well, and the publisher looked kind of askance at me, like, no, we don't think this is going to do well. I said, dude, look at the title. Come on now. And so they, they, they didn't print enough copies when it was first released, and it sold out in a day. Wow. And then the, 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 this is before we had, like, Amazon and everything. But so when you sell off, off the shelves, you, there's nothing there to buy. And, but in that week, it hit the bestseller list, but it became a minimum bestseller, Right. It hit number 15 for one week. <laughs> That's a minimum bestseller. But it would have stayed there if there was more books there available. more copies. Yeah, so I lorded that over the publisher ever since. Um, but anyhow, Death by Black Hole, and I describe this, but also I want to share with you a poem that I composed about Death by Black Hole. May I? Yeah, please do. Okay, I mean... I'm not a poet, so dare I call it a poem. I'll call it a rhyme, okay? So. Alrighty. Here it is. Okay. In your feet first dive to this cosmic abyss, you will not survive because you will not miss. The tidal forces of gravity will create quite a calamity when you're stretched head to toe. Are you sure you want to go? 
Your body's atoms, you'll see them, will enter one by one. The singularity will eat him, and you won't be having fun. <laughs> that, I have to say, uh, is the scariest Dr. Seuss book I have ever heard. <laughs> Good night, Timmy. <laughs> Behave know. tomorrow. Exactly. <laughs> oh, snap. All right, we're we out of time, Chuck. Okay. Oh, that was cool. That man. was more than you ever cared to know about Death by Black Hole. I love it. There you go. By the way, a quick thing. If you come in in a trajectory where you don't head to the singularity, then you can bypass the singularity and you won't get torn apart. And so that, and then the, you can open up to another space time that black holes are famous, theoretically famous, for producing. And, and so I have, we didn't even talk about relativity in that in that account, but all that goes on inside of a black hole. I thought I'd tell you that. Wow. Yeah, it's okay. very cool. All right, this has been yet another Star Talk Explainer with Chuck Nice, Neil deGrasse Tyson, your personal astrophysicist. Keep looking up. <laughs> <laughs>